Two days on the run and the man suspected of gunning down a Coeur d'Alene pastor is arrested outside the White House. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nadine Woodward. 30-year-old Kyle Odom arrested by the Secret Service around 8.30 Eastern Time. KXY4 broke the news of his arrest and tonight we have in-depth team coverage. John Hendricks is live in Coeur d'Alene with more on the cross-country arrest. And John, uh, Odom flew to Washington, D.C., we understand, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Coeur d'Alene police telling us tonight that at some point yesterday, um, he went down to Boise, got on a plane, and then headed to D.C. Tonight, there is a sense of relief in this community, not only from police, but those of the families of both Odom and Pastor Tim. A bizarre turn of events in a story that caught the attention of the nation. A pastor gunned down in his church parking lot, igniting a multi-state manhunt, came to an end on the other side of the country. Kyle Odom was apprehended safely and without incident in Washington, D.C. this evening. Prior to his arrest, Coeur d'Alene Police Chief Lee White says Odom threw several items over the fence at the White House. The initial information I'm receiving is that those included some flash drives along with some other unknown items. It's my understanding that the hazmat and bomb teams are working to identify those items. Chief White says they knew Odom had traveled to D.C. and were working with the FBI on tracking his exact whereabouts. Things kind of happen simultaneously with us trying to be a federal Bureau of Investigation trying to locate him there in D.C. and then his incident at the White House were just about simultaneous. Prior to all of this, investigators say after Odom carried out his attack in Coeur d'Alene, they were able to track him to Spokane and then south. That's when he dropped off their radar. His car has been located at the Boise Airport where they say he got on that plane and headed to D.C. The information that we gleaned through our interviews and through review of the evidence on scene, um, the videotape of his actions causes quite a bit of concern and so uh, we took this very seriously. Tonight the Coeur d'Alene Police Department and this community very thankful this has all come to a peaceful end. The community over this incident has really galvanized. They've come together once again um, and I think uh, everyone can breathe a big sigh of relief that this, uh, this at least as part of the case has come to a conclusion. And now it's still unknown tonight when Odom will be back here in Coeur d'Alene to um, uh, face that attempted murder charge. There is also uncertainty if he will face more charges as well. Nadine. And John, it's under, uh, hard to understand how he could have made it past TSA to get on a plane with a bulletin out about him. Yeah, that's one of the questions that was asked earlier tonight, and the chief, uh, he told us that uh, he's unsure how all that works. He said that's a question that we're going to have to um, ask uh, the Transportation Authority. Reporting live tonight, John Hendricks, KXLY, 4 News. Yeah, no kidding. All right, thanks a lot, John. Well, today, Odom was on his Facebook page. He posted a bizarre rant about why he opened fire on Pastor Tim Remington, and that post helped lead authorities to him. ABC News now confirming that police were able to track Odom after this post in which he said, the world is ruled by an ancient civilization from Mars. Pastor Tim was one of them, and he was the reason my life was ruined. I shot Pastor T uh, Tim 12 times. There is no way any human could have survived that event. Odom also changed his profile picture to a hand drawing of a creature with green eyes. That same picture found in a manifesto Odom sent to KXY4 News. The pages of that rambling statement laid out his belief that Remington was a Martian, and so were many members of the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate, as well as some members of the Israeli leadership. Also in the manifesto, a note to President Obama, not a threat, but a message, warning him about the Martians, telling him to stay strong. Now, because of that manifesto, Odom's family says that they are thankful their son was arrested safely. They said in a statement tonight, we are truly thankful to God he is safe and no one else has been injured. Well, tonight, KXY4's Katie Curry spoke with uh, those close to Pastor Remington and Katie. They too thankful no one else, including Odom, was hurt tonight. Nadine, everyone is going to be sleeping a little easier tonight, knowing that Odom was not only found, but he was found safely. Now, those closest to Pastor Tim say they still believe Odom deserves the consequences of his actions, but they also want him to know they love and forgive him. Many say it is clear from Odom's writings in his manifesto and his Facebook posts that he is mentally unstable. The family of Pastor Tim told KXOY that he already forgives Odom for what he's done, and now they are following in his lead. 
Just, uh, they're all of them overwhelmed, of course. First, of course, there's the shock. What happened? Why did it happen? Uh, the grief over his pain, the joy that he's not dead. That's a miracle in itself. John Padula, the outreach pastor at the church that Pastor Tim um, is a pastor at as well, found out early this morning from Coeur d'Alene detectives that he too was a target of Odom's on Sunday. He says, believe it or not, his first thought wasn't to hate, but to help. Um, I needed help. We've all needed help. All of us have to enter at the same door, and that's Jesus. And without Jesus, we're all capable of doing exactly what he did. And uh, I have hope for him. Uh, I believe for him, and we love him dearly, and we're excited to see what God does on this end of it. John has asked police that he be one of the first people to speak with Odom when he returns to Idaho. Odom has to agree to that meeting. Now, friends of Pastor Tim have set up a GoFundMe page to help his family out financially during this time. We have attached a link to that on our website at KXLY.com. Reporting live in Coeur d'Alene, Katie Curry, KXLY 4 News. All right, thank you, Katie. Now, Pastor Remington's family tells KXLY 4 that he is in ICU tonight at Kootenai Health. Uh, this morning, Coeur d'Alene police were still providing security at the hospital. Remington's brother says that six bullets hit Tim in the parking lot at the altar church. One of them lodged in the soft tissue under his skull. Another fractured his right shoulder. The associate pastor of Candlelight Fellowship says everyone is praying for a swift recovery. You can't believe that God is in control of everything and is involved in everything. You can't go forward. Well, Remington expected to leave the ICU in the next couple of days, but will likely be in the hospital for several more weeks. This is a story that we will continue to follow. You can f catch the very latest on KXOY at our website, KXOY.com, online, also social media. Just search KXOY4.